What's up guys, Hayden Aquilon here. Wanted to give you a little update. Uh, this week was absolutely nuts. We just finished moving into the new spot. Uh, we got about three times the size at the new warehouse. Um, so I'm very, very stoked on that one. Uh, it's been quite a ride at the old place. Um, you know, we had constant struggles moving around in there, finding, you know, places to put things, whatever you want to call it, but it was absolutely necessary um, to save cost, to get in somewhere quick and to just have the location we had was incredible. It was right near some of my best sources. Um, all of it was nice, it was very close to my house. So, um, you know, where I am now, we basically moved outside of the city it's another 12 to 15 minute drive. So I do commute pretty far now. Um, we also, during all this, we also moved homes. Um, so I'm driving about 40 to 45 minutes a day just to get to the warehouse, which is fine. Um, you know, I'll do whatever it takes. So we're good there. But the big up updates I have now are pretty, pretty cool. Um, I have just, I have so many things going through my head right now. It's hard to even get them out, but we got a new pallet stacker, um, or excuse me, pallet tipper. It's made everything much more efficient, quicker. It's gonna make us a lot more money. I found it for like 30% of the list price. It was hardly used. Um, it was a $55 piece of machinery, or excuse me, $5,500 piece of machinery. Got it for about 1500 bucks, plus uh, $200 freight. So that was nice. Uh, my full-time warehouse manager, Will, starts tomorrow so that is awesome and i'm really looking forward to that hopefully he's going to remove me from a lot of the day-to-day -day stuff that i don't like doing um and we'll still have a couple part-time guys come in and out nothing crazy nothing on a daily basis we're trying to keep our cost very low overhead low overall so i don't want to really overextend ourselves right now um, but the good news with the new warehouse is that it's actually cheaper than the last place and it's actually three times bigger. So that's awesome. We're paying $415 less a month. Also the utilities are cheaper because it's outside of the city of Austin. The place we're working with now is a lot better. All the rates are better. So overall, we're really excited about it. Our neighbors are good. And the best part about it all is we now have a forklift that we can use whenever we want. We haven't worked out the details of that yet, but it's gonna be really cheap. Um, it's something like maybe a low monthly due that we pay to the owner. It's the owner's forklift of the warehouse complex. So um, they actually only use it once a month for like an hour. So. That's awesome, we're gonna work some out with them. But I wanted to step back and talk about Amazon right now in particular in sales. Um, we, there's definitely, I guess you could say a slowdown happening for us. I'm not saying it's slowing down for you, but we're seeing a slowdown 100%. I'm not talking about RA people that are getting all these, you know, high demand products. I'm talking about what we sell, which is books, media, CDs, uh, DVDs, video games. And when I say slow down, though, I'm not, I'm not really saying it's stagnating. I'm just saying that with what we're sending in, I would expect a better sales bump, but we're not getting it. We're more so like flatlining. Um, there's not a ton of growth, but I'm still happy with what we have. Um, so, you know, we did 60, about 60,000 the last two months. We're going to come in at, a lot, at about 40 this month. It's looking like, like 42, I think. So, you know, it went down, but you know, we're still happy. It's still good. We have, uh, August right around the corner textbook season, hopefully, school systems go back into play and we get textbook sales. So that'll be nice. Um, and you know, right now things are only going to get better. We're actually pacing to do a half a million this, this year, which is great with the addition of will our, you know, our first full-time W2 employee, we should have a ton 
of extra productivity. And I'm what I'm kind of curious about, and I haven't seen online, is that you can't really find anything about, and I just, I don't know why this is. Maybe, I'm hoping maybe one of you guys can point me in that direction, but I cannot for the life of me find any kind of calculation or assumption of how much like an extra employee should add in revenue in terms of like making sure you're on the right path with them, right? Like how much, how much should each employee bring in to where it's like their, I'm not saying their value is there, but like, you know what I mean? Their, their productivity is there in like certain industries. So I would love to know in our industry, like it's called e-commerce, how much extra revenue should one person help you bring in, right? So where, I'm not talking about an arbitrary person like an admin at a desk or a receptionist. I'm talking about someone who actually like is involved in the productivity. They scan, they list, they send these books out for you. They're actually literally making you money. So I would love to know if there's something out there like that. My goal, and I don't know if this is good or bad, I just know it based off what I've done personally, the work I put in and what I've seen come out of it in the business. I expect Will, and I'm gonna talk about this within a while, I expect him to at least generate us an extra like $150,000 a year in revenue, minimum. I don't think that's asking a lot. I don't think that that's out of the question. I think that that is totally reasonable and you know that should definitely be doable for sure so that's what i got let me know what your thoughts are on that I, again i think that's that's totally doable he's getting fed unlimited resources he never has to go look for sources he gets all the material he needs all day to grind on to scan list box send out so we'll see how that goes um in terms of other updates I don't have a ton more for you guys. You know, like you've seen, I don't just put up videos every day to just talk about whatever. I mean, I'm trying to just bring you value when I can. Um, I will say this, I will say this, cause I've been asked this like probably over five times in the last week. When is the right time to get a warehouse and go all in? Uh, it's very simple. It's when your cash flow from your books and your media can easily afford you a warehouse to operate in and also machinery uh, that goes with the warehouse. So like if you need a pallet sack or something like that, have your business fund itself, fund its own growth. And right now I wouldn't do any of that because we're going into a recession. It's very, very clear. I mean, if, how do you not see the writing on the wall, you guys? We've been inflated for months we have this thing going on in the background which i can't say because they take it off youtube apparently but all the signs point to this interest rates are staying down money's worth nothing it's going to be like we're pushing around wheelbarrows with cash pretty soon i don't think it's gonna get that bad but you get what i'm saying now is not the time and it's kind of crazy like everyone I think everyone's listening to each other on podcasts and then just regurgitating what they're saying. Everyone's like, double down, triple down, you're all in, like go all in right now. And it's like, some for some things, I think that's definitely true. But I think right now you really have to, you shouldn't be like contracting at all. But you should be renegotiating every price down you can. You should be you should be looking at cost cutting wherever you can. This isn't the time, like most of these guys say, to like throw everything you have, hire all these people, do this, do that. I I just don't I don't know where that's coming from. I, I guess maybe it's because these guys have these massively deep pockets and investors, and they're not held to some standard of some sort. But for you guys just keep look if you're if you're doing what you're supposed to do if you're feeding the beast continually look at where right now where you can cut costs across the board talk to your suppliers talk to every look every time you go in if you're a thrifter you should ask every single time hey can i get a discount on these books you should always ask for a cheaper amount i i remember when i used to go in i'd be like 
hey, uh, is it, you know, White Sticker Monday, whatever. They all have different sayings for them. It's like, is it White Sticker Monday where I get 50% off or, you know, White Sticker Day? I didn't know what day it was that they had it. Like, say it was a Saturday, I go and I'm like, is it White Sticker uh, Prices Day? And they're like, oh, no, that's on a Monday. And I'm like, oh, I was like, do you think I could get it anyways? And like, sometimes they'll say yes. Why would you not ask? If you're working with bulk with suppliers, talk to them right now. If you usually only buy four pallets at like, say, $75 a pallet, go, hey, um, I know right now you guys might be hurting for cash and, you know, I could use more supply. If I bought twice as many this time around, could I get them for 60 you know, and and what two, that's going to do two things for you. That's going to lower your cost. It's also going to afford you more inventory should someone shut down, you know, God forbid again with all this stuff. And at least then you have supply to draw from when everyone else is shut down and you can't go out and scout for books, and pick up books. So I hope that all helps you guys. Um, as always, please like if you like this. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. And as always, I will answer any questions you have uh, at the bottom. Um, and I will talk to you guys soon. I'll give a little tour if you guys want to see the warehouse, either on like Instagram or on the next video. But um, yeah, I'm super excited for everybody. I just want to reiterate, I don't think you should be scared, but I do think something's happening, clearly. There's going to be a slowdown. Uh, last thought on that if you think about it there's over I think we we're at 34% no let me it's probably I think it was 30 around 30% 30 unemployment so people are getting handouts they've been getting handouts for months these handouts are ending end of July which is next month also and that includes the CARES Act which is $600 a week of disposable income most people got that who probably shouldn't have even got it so everyone's had all this play money and if you guys have seen sales go up I'm sure a lot of that's part of that also stimulus checks everyone got $1,200 per person if you were a family you got even money for both of you and for your kids if they don't do another round of stimulus, guess what? They're not doing it again. And so all this funny money that's been thrown into the system is going to go bye-bye soon. And companies are still contracting. Not everyone's hiring on more people like Amazon. Okay? Most people are going... A lot of people are going out of business. A lot of retail is going out of business. A lot of, a lot of companies like real estate companies are playing it safe and they're managing downside. They're not looking to expand right now. They're not hiring people. They're trying to figure out how to survive. That's all they're trying to do. They're trying to say, it's okay, we're gonna lose money. We're gonna run out of money in four months. They're like, how can we go six months and hope to like outlast this whole thing? So that's their mindset. So I'm just looking out for you guys and just be careful what you're hearing out there. Take what I say with a grain of salt do your own research, but that's what I'm going to do. It's worked for me. And, you know, I think it will work for a lot of you guys too. So anyways, have a great day, guys. We'll talk soon. Take care. See you later.